Welcome to the Catalyst Sale Podcast. Sales is a thinking process. This podcast will help you learn about what works in sales, how to hone your skills, and increase your success. I'm your host, Jody Mayberry, and this week we have Mike Simmons. Mike, I have a quick question for you. Uh, Mike Connor hasn't been with us for a couple weeks. Is he offended by what I said? He is not offended. In fact, I don't even know if Connor is listening to the podcast. So what I'm going to ask is if anybody's got a question, let's call him out specifically. And through that question, maybe we can get him more engaged in this thing. There we go. A Mike Connor specific question. Well, I want to bring up a question here on my own based on a topic you've discussed in the past. And then we've talked about the difference between uh, progress and action and actually getting stuff done. And I think about your washing machine example, but I've realized so many organizations have processes in place and there are times, at least I think so. And I want to know what you think. Are there times when process impedes progress? Absolutely. So I guess that's enough for today's podcast. Maybe, maybe, maybe All we right. should have- Thanks. Actually, Mike is, uh, Mike is working very hard with a couple of the clients that we work with. We've got a lot of things going, that are going on uh, that are really good inside the business. So divide and conquer has been important. So as much as we poke fun at, at Connor, he is, uh, he is gainfully employed. Well, I, I just do that. So when he listens to the show, he knows we still love him. We absolutely do love him. So when I think of process, process is important to me when it comes to execution and scalability. It is hard to scale things if there's not a process in place that supports that scale, but you can overdo it. I mean, you can process for the sake of process. And I feel like the P's are really popping here, but the uh, process for the sake of process is not a good thing. It's actually, it's never a good thing. And what it does is it stifles creativity inside your organization. And we've talked in the past uh, about your templates on proposals and your templates on your emails and all templatizing, really taking the thought out of sales. And as we say, sales is a thinking process. We want our reps to be creative. We want them to apply thought. We want them to execute. So setting up a standard process, you know, let's say in the context of a weekly report can be really frustrating. You've got to ask yourself, is that weekly report for you for your leadership, or for the rep who's part of your team. And I've seen this happen over and over again when a new sales leader moves into a role and they feel like, I've got to have a weekly meeting with my team. I've got to have everybody write down their notes of what they accomplished in the week. I've got to have, I've got to have. That's what a CRM is for. You should be able to get your data out of your CRM and figure out What are some of the high points that are, what are some of the broader stroke things that are happening inside the organization? Number of opportunities, revenue that's expected, forecast, how pipeline is being built, all of those things. The thing I like to ask a rep to provide though, and this is a weekly thing, so maybe it's a little too process intensive, but what I like to ask them to provide are some details around what's working, what's not what do we need to move forward? So if I've got an idea of what's working inside the business, things that are not working inside of the business, and areas where they need my help to unclog something, then I can have a really productive conversation with them if it's necessary, or I can just respond to that communication and say, awesome, keep doing what you're doing. Either way, the rep doesn't have to waste time putting together a book report for me and I don't have to waste time on a phone call or in a discussion or in a group meeting where everybody goes through pipeline review and the stories are the same each week. The only thing that changes are the names of the customer and everybody ends up on Slack or reading whatever they're reading on the website or in their email and they're not engaged. So process for the sake of process sucks. It helps to prevent progress and minimizes creativity. If you want your reps to be creative, give them some guidelines, some guideposts that they can work in and let them execute in the way that makes sense. Now, look at your data and determine if they're executing. If they're not, then start to adjust, then tighten the screws a little bit, then start to implement some more process. But I think what you'll find is if you give your reps the room to run, 
they will be significantly more successful than they will be if you stifle them. Well, hearing you say that now, I wonder why do you have me fill out a TPS report for every podcast episode? Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> the uh, and uh, yeah, office uh, office space is part of our training, so everybody <laughs> knows about the importance of TPS reports. And the reason I have you fill out that TPS report is because I don't eat my own dog food and I need to grow as a leader. Maybe someday, Jody, I will figure out that the TPS report just goes in the uh, circular file and doesn't really go anywhere and doesn't really deliver value. Well, I want to use Catalyst Sale as a model here because you certainly have a strong opinion about process impeding progress. We certainly picked an interesting topic that requires us to use a lot of P's this week. But you understand the importance of that. So within Catalyst Sale, how would you handle it if one of your reps, one of your uh, employees came up and said, I just don't think this process you're having us do uh, benefits the job that I'm doing? How would you handle that? I'd ask them, what do they recommend? Like, okay, well, so what would you do different? And you know, sometimes that's a tough question to ask. Sometimes people don't really know if you're asking that question because you're really interested in the solution or if you're just trying to paint them in a corner and go in for the kill and tell them they're wrong. So I think you've got to be you've got to have this culture inside your organization where people have a high level of comfort asking questions and giving feedback. And I was on a, a Sherm chat earlier and I think the point I made there was you know we are smarter than me. So if somebody's got a recommendation, if somebody's got an idea, I think it's great to talk through that idea. What we might ultimately get to is the logic behind the idea is flawed, or the logic behind the idea doesn't align with what a client needs, or any number of reasons that are outside of our control drive us to follow a process. So in that scenario, after I get the recommendation from them, then what I try to do is respond in the context of what I know is important to our client. Maybe our client just works in this specific way. And we're one component of the 90 different things that they need to do. And the best way to deliver that information in order to impact change is in a certain format. So we'll say, these are the guidelines we need to work within. We can be as creative as we want within those guidelines, but how can we make this work? And ideally, the outcome is better than the template that we were using before because it aligns in the context of what's important to the client and also works for the rep. You know, we've got a client that we work with where they like to see information in the context of three kind of key areas. One is the good. So what's happening that's good. The second one is the bad. What's happening that is not good in the business or what do we need to work on? And then the third one is kind of questions, the interesting, like what are we hearing and seeing but we don't really know about? And I've got a a couple of reps who work on that account and the reports I get from them on a weekly basis or the overview from them are different. They have their own style. Ultimately, I get those three main components. And I've got one rep who actually calls it the John Wayne report uh, because it's the good, the bad, the ugly. And you know, just so I think, again, it's just, what's the end? The end result is I want to be able to provide a summary to the client on how things are working, things that need to change and areas that we should focus and some questions that are out there. I get that data from the sales team. I can deliver that. And we don't have to have meeting after meeting after meeting to hear what's happened in the last week. They can do their job. I mean, the thing you've got to remember as a new manager in sales, and I I just try to beat this one over the head, but anytime your rep is talking to you, they are not making money. You're not buying your product from your rep. So if you're having that conversation, you're keeping them away from a revenue generating conversation that they could be having with the client. So you've got to ask yourself, is this for you? Because you want to feel good about the job you do and your leadership and what you work on and that you're making an impact? Or is it for the benefit of your team member? And if it's for the benefit of your team member, great. If it's for you, then you've kind of got to check your ego and say, how is that going to help the organization, the ultimate mission? and I think the other question you want to ask, if you're questioning what you're doing and what your role is, is what could I be doing that actually will help improve sales, improve performance, improve direction inside the organization and focus there? And some of the best people to ask that question of is your sales team. If you ask them directly and they can trust you and you do it in a one-on-one environment, you ask them, what can I be doing better? Where can I improve? 
and you listen, they'll provide some pretty amazing feedback to you. Lee Cockrell has been a guest on this show. And, you know, I, I work with Lee quite a bit. And I know one of the things he says about at Disney, they're able to create magic because of the way they work. And the way they work is also directed by processes, policies, procedures. But he also will tell you that all of that can get in the way of doing the work that you need to do, that quite often it gets stale and it gets in the way. It impedes progress, like you say. So from your point of view, running a company, how do you make sure you have the processes, the policies, the procedures that you need in place to make sure the right things get done and you can create magic, but also make sure that none of it gets stale so it gets in the way of serving your customers and your employees? For me, I think it's important to question everything. You know, like you question, why are we doing this constantly? And some of those are just internal questions where I'm asking, having conversations with myself, which is just another, uh, another light into my personality. But, you know, just you're constantly asking that question, what can we be doing better? Are there areas to improve? Are there things that we're doing that are getting in the way of success? And I think if you're honest with yourself, you can reveal those process items that are processed just for the sake of process. Um, now, all of that being said, checklists and process are really important. And you know, I've heard Lee say this before too, in a couple of different episodes where he talks about, you want to make sure the first officer who's in the right seat, uh, the airplane that you're flying in is going through a checklist and isn't just going off memory. Is that knob in the right place? And is that lever in the right place? So these checklists have a place. And if you're in that kind of environment, you know, there's a great book out there. I think it's the name of it, if I remember right, Checklist Manifesto, it talks about how important it is to have a checklist in a hospital uh, or medical environment and how having that checklist reduced the number of times that they sewed patients up with sponges inside. And I don't know about you, but I would not want to go get surgery and find out that somebody left an extra sponge inside me. So checklist makes sense. Process makes sense in some areas. Just make sure you've got the right context. Jody, I don't know if that hit the mark or not. Oh, yeah. That's, and, and that's, I think the point is you said you question everything and that's how you keep that from getting stale. Is this something that you and Mike Connor ever sit down together and say, why are we doing this? Yeah, there are a lot of times we'll just go up on the whiteboard uh, and we'll whiteboard some things out about what we want to accomplish and what we can eliminate. and. There are more of those kind of conversations. We've worked with each other long enough where I think even as we go through the idea of implementing new ideas and new concepts, we can evaluate pretty quickly whether or not this is going to make sense for the long term. Uh, we make some mistakes as we go through and we adjust, but we're always questioning everything. As you know, whether it's in the context of working with an individual client, it's working with individual members of our team, or me getting in trouble at the house when I'm questioning things around the house and all of a sudden I look like a bit of a jackass. All right, Mike, this has been a great conversation. Do you have any final thoughts for us about the idea of process impeding progress? Yeah. Again, just look in the mirror and ask yourself, what would happen if I had to deliver this same thing to whomever? And what value does it deliver? And if it's something that you want to, would, would want to continue to deliver and it delivers some value, then now you've got to talk, you've got to figure out what your approach is with your team so that you manage expectations with the team and help them execute. But never get so married to an individual process or an approach that you stifle your own change. I mean, the thing that frust- one of the statements that frustrates me more than anything is when I hear people say, this is how we do it, or this is how we've always done it. And Heck, if we're doing everything the way we've always done it, we'd probably still be you know, hunting with sticks and uh, riding horses and doing all those kind of things. And, and that, to me, doesn't sound like progress. I, I really like that I can get to so much information on my phone. I can listen to podcasts. I can read information. I can consume video. If it wasn't for progress, we wouldn't be there. So you know, just make sure your process is not stifling the progress inside your organization. All right. Good stuff, Mike. Now, let me just ask if you do enjoy this show, the great content that Mike Simmons and Mike Connor bring to you every week, we would be delighted to get a 
review and a rating on iTunes. Just let us know that you enjoy the show, one, because we like it, but then two, that also helps other people discover the show because of how iTunes works. The more ratings you get, the easier it is for other people to discover the show. So if you'd be willing to do that, we would be delighted. Thank you again, Mike Simmons, for another great episode, and thank you for listening to the Catalyst Sale Podcast.